Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is part three of lecture 12 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off, we were going to determine what the choking pressure ratio is for air with gamma 1.4. And if we work this out, basically we take P naught over P, put in Mach number equal one, and gamma is 1.4, and we get 1.893 as our choking pressure ratio. If the static pressure, pressure falls for a given inlet total pressure, or stagnation pressure, in order, and such that that ratio increases more, there can be no further increase in mass flow per unit area. If the pressure ratio is larger than that of the choking value, then the flow is going to accelerate downstream of the throat in order to get to supersonic flow. And the density is going to decrease faster in supersonic flow than the velocity is increasing. And what this means is that the flow area has to increase in order to support the acceleration of the flow. So this gives rise to the what should now be familiar converging diverging nozzles, nozzles to accelerate a flow from subsonic to supersonic conditions. So Converging nozzle, right, is going to just choke at Mach 1, and there's no way we can get the Mach number above that within the nozzle. But if the nozzle is underexpanded, that means that the exit static pressure is sort of lower than the value just needed to choke it, then the stream tube area is actually going to actually continue to increase outside of the nozzle downstream, and actually you'll get acceleration to supersonic flow outside of the nozzle. And accelerating the flow to supersonic in this way is actually very efficient as long as you're not trying to go to a high supersonic condition. It can be sl slightly supersonic flow. And we'll talk about this a little bit later in the course. Um, but in modern high bypass ratio jet engines, um, we'll find that typically the bypass nozzle is actually choked at cruise or m and more than choked at cruise. So it's taking advantage of this uh, efficient uh, expansion to a slightly supersonic condition but it won't be choked at takeoff. And the core flow nozzle is never choked. So to try to sort of quantify this behavior more carefully and figure out how much flow can fit, we want to introduce a non-dimensional mass flow per unit area. This is just another name for the corrected flow per unit area, which you've seen the corrected flow equation before, but we're going to think about this a lot more in this course that or in this part of the course than we have previously and we can write this a little bit differently here so it's the mass flow uh, times the square root of CPT naught over AP naught and this is a function of uh, Mach number and uh, gamma it's a nonlinear function um, and we, the, the quantity on the left hand side is non-dimensional and we will define this as m bar and call this the non-dimensional mass flow per unit area. And if we plot this out uh, for gamma 1.4, um, what we see is that it rises kind of almost linearly at first versus Mach number, hits a maximum value at Mach 1 as we would now expect, and that maximum value is about 1.28. And uh, the, if we sort of, as the, the, this quantity increases, we can also look at what's happening to the static to total temperature ratio, the static to total density ratio, and the static to total pressure ratios. Um, and all three of those continuously fall. So only the corrected mass flow per unit area has this sort of uh, peak and then decrease behavior. The behaviors of the uh, other thermod the thermodynamic quantities are monotonic and drop continuously as you increase the Mach number. If we assume that our flow is isentropic, we can again, um, we, can, we can rewrite this non-dimensional mass flow. Instead of being in terms of Mach number, we can write it directly in terms of the pressure ratio. Um, so this actually turns out to be quite useful because the pressure ratio is often something that we can calculate more easily than the Mach numbers. Um, and so we can write that the m bar is going to be just this function of uh, p over p naught n. Uh, so the inlet total pressure and the, the static pressure at wherever point we, we want to calculate the non dimensional mass flow per unit area. So this will turn out to be quite useful later on. So 
So I want to now sort of think about the sensitivity of the Mach number to the area. So if we assume that, let's just say to make the numbers easy, we're dealing with a cross-sectional area at a throat of one meter square. And then we've got a choked, converging, diverging nozzle, and that the flow is completely isentropic. So what I want you to do is find the areas where the Mach number is 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 and sort of think about and comment on the results. So take a couple of minutes and figure this out before you move on to the next part of the video.